Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I wanted to do a review <coughs> over what we've gone through so far. We're halfway through the book of Revelation. And I think the most important thing is to remember we're not going to understand everything. I don't understand everything. And sometimes we uh, want to argue about what all these different things mean uh, and we can get caught up in those things. But um, when I teach, I really want to try to get across uh, what God is saying. And at the end of the day, we don't have to understand everything. We just have to trust him. And uh, we're living in a world where we feel like we should be able to understand everything. And over all the years of teaching, uh, I find it is a burden to really try to uh, get God's message across. And over the years, what I've seen is that a lot of people, <clears throat> a lot of Christians, because that's normally who I teach to, have a hard time accepting God's message. I mean, uh, we hear it, we respond to it openly, uh, but what I've found is a lot of Christians have absolutely no intentions of applying it to their lives. And, um, that's what I've experienced over the years. And uh, the one bringing the message is usually the one that we uh, dislike the most, right? You know, it's like if we can kill the messenger, then that will destroy, take away the message. You know, it's almost like if we shoot the mailman, there'll be no more bills, right? <laughs> so uh, I really try to, I want to present the lesson in a way that's just really simple. And what I found also is that in this 21st century, there's all sorts of teaching. You can go on YouTube, uh, you know, you turn on the TV Sunday morning and there's sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon. And uh, we're inundated with information and uh, this one guy says he's right and he's wrong. And it just, it's back and forth, isn't it? And you don't really know what to believe. And I think what has happened, we have a generation that has turned off to all of it. Because at the end of the day, regardless of your age, we are responding to what's happening to us right now, aren't we? You know, we can talk about the Old Testament, we can talk about the future, but really what's, I'm interested in is how am I going to pay my bills now? How am I going to eat now? How am I going to put clothes on uh, my children now? It's really all about now. And because of that, uh, we can't really connect with the story. So I was sitting down and, um, and I wrote this thing out about prophecy because I do think it's really important. So why is prophecy important? and necessary. Why is it important and necessary? Because all man-made programs think they have a new breakthrough. Every program. And so I was, as I was looking at what are some of the problems in our, in our world, I came across uh, for five easy payments you can receive the roadmap for complete human transformation how to end human conflict and suffering and prejudice forever. Now you, five easy payments, okay? And you, <laughs> now what I'm gonna tell you is for free, but you can pay for this. Uh, poverty, disease, gun violence, pollution, drug abuse, climate change, oh, it goes on and on, right? And because we don't really know prophecy and what God has told us is going to happen, we buy into it because it's happening to us now. We want to end gun violence now. We want to end poverty now. But God has already told us uh, what's coming. 
Uh, so I dare to think just how much money has been made on this snake oil approach to life's problems. How much money? All you got to do is write a book about something. And these self-help books. And Christians are buying it. So what is even more frightening is how many Christians are buying these self-help approaches to life's problems. We're buying, and why are we doing it? It's because we really don't understand prophecy. And prophecy is really simple. We don't have to understand all the symbols. So I believe this is why it's so important for us to know what God's plan is for his world. It is never easy to deliver a message that is not well received, is it? Especially when it's convicting, when it goes against the world's system that so many have fallen in love with. So what we have is a message that is not received very well. Uh, so just for one moment, just one moment, pretend that you are in a desperate need for a miracle in your life. This is just pretend. Pretend that you're in a desperate need for a miracle. Everyone's praying for you. Family, friends, you name it, you've asked them to pray for this miracle. Just pretend. Everyone gets the same answer back. So we're all praying, you're asking, and we get this, well, this is all pretense, okay? And we get the answer, and th the answer is clear. And here's what the answer is. Gone on vacation spending time with my real family, be back after the holidays. If I have time, I'll get back with you. God, what would we do? Hmm? Uh, aren't you glad God doesn't wander off as we do? Oh, when we're in trouble, we're crying out to him, Right? But when times are good, we really don't think about it. Why is it that we only expect God to be obedient? <laughs> we want God to hold up to his end, right? Prophets in the Old Testament was God's spokesperson. Some foretelling of the future happenings to bring hope and repentance. That's what, this prophe that's what prophecy is about, bringing hope and repentance because we're seeing uh, where we're wrong and we need to turn. The prophets stood boldly relying on God's message. Today we should pray to God to help us to listen to his word with reverence. What's reverence? What is that? I want to be obedient. I respect his word. I'm listening. I want God to help me to understand that. Uh, I think it's in Ecclesiastes. It says the whole duty, the whole purpose of man is to fear God and to keep his commandments. You want to know what your responsibility is? You want to know what God wants of us? To fear him, to reverence him. And that's what we should pray for, that we would reverence his word. It's never easy to deliver a message that you know is not going well, not going to be well received. And when even your own rejects it, it's even harder. The prophets went to their own people and they rejected it. Some of them were, were even killed and stoned. But what about today? You sometimes find yourself standing in the middle of the road of compromise, wanting to be a part of something that you know deep down inside is really going nowhere but you're there just because. If you find yourself in the middle of the road of compromise, around family members that you really love, they don't believe, not for one moment. And they really don't want to hear what the word of God says. Prophecy gives us hope, protects us from the snake oil salespeople of this world trying to tell us they can fix every time. He's trying to tell us they can fix everything. If they could fix everything, okay, here's my wish list. I wish they would start in the hospitals with the terminally ill. You know, we 
come in here, we, we braved the cold, but there's a lot of people that are still stuck in bed. But there's a lot of people in the hospitals. If you don't believe it, just take a visit over there, praying over their loved ones, hoping that they will get well. Uh, so if they could fix everything, would they fix that? What about the sick and the shut-in? There's a lot of people, members of this church, that are sick and shut-in. They can't assemble with the saints like we can. But we take it for granted. We show up when we want to. Uh, the, the physically disabled, the homeless, the bandit children, endless violence, and the list goes on. If they could fix that, why won't they? Why don't they? Because they can't. There's only one person who can. That's Jesus Christ. So why do we buy into this world system? Why do we buy into all this snake oil? We can fix it. We can do it. Because we know the message we have is not well received by this world. And I think that brings a fear to us, doesn't it? We're taking a message to people that really don't want to hear it. It's funny, we were uh, over to my mother's and we were talking about something. And um, I was, that look in her face is like, okay, here comes a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we, you know, I love my mother now. You got the mom. <laughs> yeah, I love my mother, but I cannot go against the word. I just can't do it. I can't. I don't care who you are. And so, as I started to speak, she got that look on her face because she said, Here it comes. <laughs> the word of God is powerful. And there is one day we will have to give an account. Romans 10, 3, chapter 3, 10 through 12 says, There is none that understands or seeks after God. Nobody. That's why we don't really care to take this message to the world. Because they don't understand and they don't seek after him. But what about us? And it says none. That's right. It means, so then how are we going to overcome this if none of us seek him? Well, what God did, because he had a plan. He deposited the Holy Spirit in us. And the Spirit is to guide us, to lead us, and teach us. But then we have to exercise our faith. That's a dirty word, isn't it? We have to exercise our faith. And so when we all got up this morning, we got ready and we came in here, what we were doing is exercising our faith. I heard a preacher say, he said, uh, his wife uh, said, you hear that thunder? And he turned to her and said, no, that's not thunder, honey. That's millions of Baptists turning over in their bed. And you know what? When it's cold, when there's an inconvenience, we think about it, but what do we do? We turn over and say, oh, I'm going later. I'll go next week. Aren't you glad that God doesn't take vacations? Yeah. He doesn't wander off like we do. All right. So that being said, we're going to do a review here. And then next week we'll continue back up. All right. Revelation number one is a unveiling a divine supernatural disclosure to John passed on to believers. So now he's opening up, he's letting us see what's going to happen in the future. Uh, someone said, you know why men don't like to go to the doctor? Why do you suppose they don't like to go to the doctor? That's right. There's, a, there's going to be a revelation, isn't it? <laughs> There's going to be a revelation when you go to the doctor. And I don't want that revelation. This is what you need to do, right? You need to stop eating this. You need to do this. You need to stop doing All I want is a pill, a shot. Just take care of it. Something I don't want to have to think about. So what we're getting is a revelation, a revealing of what's going to happen in the future. And a lot of people don't want to see that. Number two, this is God's story being revealed and passed down to John, and he's recording what he sees. 
This is God's story. It's not mine. It's not any of ours. God is revealing it to us. He's passing it down to John. John is writing it down. Number three, the outline of the book of Revelation 119, past, present, future. The past is Jesus was here, but he's now in heaven. That was the past. How do we know? Because there was witnesses that saw him die and he walked amongst them. Now, the present is the church, the, the church age. It's what's happening right now. And uh, in that book, as John writes to the seven churches, he's telling, he's giving them warnings. He's giving us warnings. That's what we can take from it. And then he's telling us the rewards of uh, what will happen when we, are, when we stay steadfast. And so that's the past, present, and future. That's the, whole, that's the outline of Revelation. The past, Jesus was. Uh, the present is what we're living in now. And the future is what we're looking at. What's going to come on this earth? Um, number four, the present seven churches in the world. Jesus is alive and moves amongst us. He's alive. Jesus is alive. He's in us and he's moving amongst us in the services. What do you think he's thinking? Do you ever think, you know, when he walks amongst the service? What do you think he thinks? What do you think when you're walking out? Do you think anything? Yeah, his, his, his love overcomes it. And then he gives us warning in his words to help us to recognize some of the things that... Um, you know, what scares me is when he says, no, and that includes you, and that tells yeah. me you are uh, No, we're really not. Yeah. We shouldn't be afraid of that. All he's doing is... Uh, it's kind of like the diagnosis when you go to the doctor. Now, if you went to the doctor and he says, okay, you're getting ready to die in five minutes. Now, you're going to be scared. But if he gives us a, a diagnosis of an illness, but then he says, okay, we have some medicine for that. And that's all the word is telling us, is that he's helping us to recognize our condition is that we can't save ourselves. But he says, okay, I got, I got the medicine for you. And so we shouldn't be afraid. So now that uh, we got the medicine, the answer, what do we do? What do you do? You, you don't get the prescription field. You, you, you take the medicine. That's right. You take it. And so that's all we're doing. We're not afraid. He's just telling us our condition. Because remember I read earlier, is that man has come up with solutions on how to fix everything. And then God comes back and says, no, nobody can fix this. And so well, what do I do? I'm going to take his medicine. And so we shouldn't be afraid. I think when you read the stories of all the people in the scripture, that gives you a lot of hope. That's right. Even those that were the highest, so to speak, on God's list, Moses and he was the most humble man on earth. There was a time he had pride. That's right. There was, there was, they all made mistakes. That's right. But, but we, as it says, you know, we've all sinned. That's right. I'm sure. So God understands that. All have sinned. All have sinned. And um, we want to. David's life. I mean, yeah. that gives me a lot of hope. Yeah. <laughs> I think the thing I struggle with the most is what we have a hard time understand it. And, uh, you know, my grandson, you know, goes to the church here and he is thinking about being baptized. And um, so I wrote a little book. I told him, I've been sad, I was going to write a little book, just simple. And uh, it just breaks down everything. And I gave it to him at Christmas. And I said, uh, 
And when you understand this, then it's time to be baptized. I hope no one talks him into doing this just because he can't take communion because the rest of the kids, they take communion. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, see, that's the thing you don't understand. So every oh, sorry, take communion because uh, he's not, he hasn't been baptized. That's what they told yeah, you can't take it until you're baptized. I don't want him to feel that pressure. Yeah. And so, um, see, I didn't know that until, uh, you know, we were sitting in church and they were passing the communion. He says, well, I can't take it. He said, because I haven't been baptized. But the book I gave him just breaks down everything. What is the gospel? What is sin? You know, what is a Christian? Why be baptized? You know, those are simple questions, but you know, a lot of Christians can't answer that. Was this a book you wrote? Yeah, it's just a little simple book. It's, and it's uh, most of them have just a few words on each page. And then there's blanks to fill in. Do you believe this? You know, he said, well, Grandpa, can I write in this? I said, it's your book. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, understand it. Because what we need is soldiers in the battlefield. And uh, you remember the story of Gideon. Oh, if we just have a lot of people, right? I said, you got too many. You got too many. And um, children are safe, okay? Let them be children. What we need to do is protect them. And um, there will be a day that they'll have to be accountable. But I, I believe they're okay. Let them grow and be children. And uh, because um, it's just like the military. Uh, you can only go in there at a certain age. They're not taking children, are they? <laughs> and uh, they're going to make you become a man or a woman pretty fast. Well, have to start huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's the thing is we should not be afraid. We're not afraid. And remember the scripture that Paul writes to Timothy. He says, God has not given us a spirit of what? That's not, fear is not from God. It's not. But the world uses that, doesn't it? It wants us to be afraid. If you don't do this, you're going to die now. Right? But if I understand the word of, of God, we're going to live for eternity. And this life here is just very short compared to eternity. We should not be afraid. All right, enough of that sermon. Uh, which one were I, where are I, Steve? Help me out. Five. <laughs> Number five, future the cosmic crisis and the removal of the true church from this earth. There's going to be a cosmic crisis, and that's what we've been looking at, all the supernatural things that's coming on this earth. Uh, but we, as a people, are rejecting that because it's all about the now, what I'm experiencing now. I don't want to hear about what's in the future. I've got to eat right now. Uh, but understanding prophecy gives us peace. Number six, what has happened, or what has not happened yet, is now being told how it will happen in, the, in advance. What hasn't happened yet is being told to us. You don't have to look at your horoscope. You don't have to go to a palm reader. God is telling us what's going to happen. Isaiah 46, 10. I make known the end from the beginning. From ancient times, what is to come? I say my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. His plan is going forward, whether you want to uh, dismiss it or not. It's going to happen. And uh, I like what Solomon says, lean not on your own understanding. And that's so important because if you look at the Bible, really what it is is history written in advance. Now, how, that doesn't even make any sense. Is that everything that God has said is going to happen 
guess what? It has what? It has happened. History written in advance. So why would we try to change it by latching on to some snake oil sales remedy on how to fix this world? It can't be done. He's already said his purpose will stand. Number seven, a great tribulation is coming on this earth and God is revealing what will happen. He's telling us. He's telling us what's coming. Number eight, tribulation. It is a cause of great trouble or suffering. It will be the worst time in human history. It hasn't come yet. I know we're thinking that it's here. No, it hasn't. Just because our lives have been inconvenient, yes. Yeah, no, I hadn't heard that. But what's coming out of the Euphrates? What do we study about? You remember? Yeah, there's going to be some spirits come out of that. Yeah. yeah. Prophecy is, is just, and the thing about it is when we see, every time we see it fulfilled, it should give us peace, not fear. Because all it does is confirm what God is saying is true. And we don't have to be rocket scientists to accept it. We might not even be able to explain it to someone else, but it's the peace that we get from it. All right, uh, number nine. The suffering we are experiencing today is because of man. I don't know, I, you know we, give, we blame God, don't we? Why is God, it's because of us. Satan, or what we put on ourselves due to our sin nature. This is not the wrath of, that God will be, that, this is not the wrath that will be coming on from God. What's happening now, this is not the wrath of God. This is man stirring the pot, making it worse. Coming up with alternative solutions other than accepting Christ. Number 10, the great tribulation is God's judgment poured out on the earth because of sin in the future. Because of sin. This is God's wrath. Uh, number 11, God is going to judge this world just as he did during the days of Noah. So it's just history being repeated. We're seeing examples of it. What is the purpose of the tribulation? to punish the world, uh, 12 and 12, 8, to punish the world for its sins. There's going to be a punishment. We don't have to do it. So what's our role in it right now? Huh? What's, the role in now? what's our role oh, in this, in this uh, punishment that's coming? What's our role? Are we to fix it? We got a message that's not going to be well what? Received. It's not going to be well received. It's not going to be well received. And I think that's why a lot of times we don't want to give it to people, especially loved ones. Um, let's see what. So, um, A, so the wrath will be poured out on this world. Right now, God is extending his grace. It's his grace that's been extended. And it's been extended, and who, uh, who's taking this grace to the world? We are. Yeah, we are. But it's a message that's not well received. Uh, B, to bring a remnant of Jewish people back to God and accept Jesus as their Messiah. So remember, the Orthodox Jew never accepted Jesus Christ as their Messiah. This is the whole purpose. One of the purposes of the tribulation is to bring them back. C, to bring Gentiles to come to know Jesus is Lord and Savior. So those that are left in this world, every knee is going to bow and recognize that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. D, Jesus comes back to the earth. That's the second coming. Defeats Satan and the Antichrist and sets up his millennium kingdom for a thousand years. Jesus is coming back. And that's the message that we're telling others. 
that's losing, that's, loose, that's losing hope in this world is that he's coming back. And guess what? We're coming back with him, to rule with him. So we need to act like it now. Uh, number 13, God reveals the scene in heaven to John, and he writes down what he sees. And so John is telling us what's in heaven. He's writing down what he sees because that's our home, and don't we look forward to it. Number 14, the throne of God. That's chapter 4, 1 through 4. The 24 elders, four living creatures, the book of the seven seals, Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah, has been slain. He sees all these things in heaven. And we'll notice that uh, from her on out throughout the scriptures in the Revelation, he's going to be known as the lamb that was slain. Uh, Fifteen, angels that join in and praise God. For Sixteen, universal worship of the Savior. Oh, don't you look forward to that. Universal, everybody, one, singing together. That's going to be a wonderful time. I look forward to that. Uh, 17, the opening of the seven seals. 18, the tribulation begins on earth. 19, the rider of the white, red, black, and the pale horse on the earth. We're seeing all these things that's going to be coming. 20, the prayers of the model remnant saints. There's going to be saints that's going to die. They're going to be martyred. Uh, 21, the beginning of the last half of the Great Tribulation, there's a pause before it begins because the remnant of Israel is sealed. See, God's not going to leave this world without uh, witnesses. And there's going to be a group of people that's going to continue on ex extending the grace of God to those that don't know him. That's how much he loves us. 21, there's going to be a redeemed multitude of Gentiles Gentiles that have come out of the great tribulation are redeemed, but they're going to die for what they believe. 23, we have the blowing of the seven trumpets. 24, trees are burnt, sea the sea becomes blood, fresh water becomes bitter, the sun, the moon, and the stars are smitten. There's a fallen star. There's plagues and locusts, angels loose at the Euphrates. There's going to be a lot that's going to come on this world. We are not, we haven't tasted any of that. We're just being inconvenienced uh, by a man's uh, careless, helpless refusal to accept Jesus Christ. Uh, 25, there is an interlude between the six and seven trumpets. 26, the strong angel with the little book. 27, John eats the little book. 28, the prophesying and slaying of the two witnesses. 29, the doom and the second wall, uh, a, a great earthquake. 30, we're now halfway there. There's a lot that's coming on this earth. But we have a message that's outside of space and time. And um, that message needs to go out there. Uh, you all heard that saying always, you're preaching to the choir. You know, even the world gets it. You know, you can only go to school, public school for so long, and then they kick you out, right? So you can't be 30 and still in high school. Why not? Huh? Too old? What happens when you got a 30-year-old amongst teenagers? Trouble. <laughs> huh? Bad influence. Yeah. So the public school is recognized, okay, we've taught you all we can. Now it's time for you to do what? Apply it. Live it. Do something with it, but you can't just sit in here forever, right? <laughs> what about us? When would it be time for us to really 
go out into the world? How long will we have to preach to the choir? I think that's a, it's a legitimate question. And um, it's hard to get out of these comfortable seats, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And what that should do is, yeah, what that should do is make the message that we have more credible. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and uh, I, I pray that we will one day come up with a strategy on how we can go out there, how we can reach people out there, and. Um, no, we don't have it all together. And uh, once uh, people get involved in our lives, they see that. All right, John, he's just as messed up as I am. The only difference is I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And uh, we have to stop thinking that we have to have it all together. We have to have every answer. You know, we can pull out every scripture. Uh, I have this uh, great relationship with God, I understand everything he's doing. I understand why. We've got to let go of that. And we've got to take our broken selves out into a broken world and tell them why they're broken. And with a message that we already know before we take it to them, they don't want to hear it. We already know that. But he's commanded us to do that. All right. Got, anybody have any Ideas, questions, thoughts before I move forward, before we dismiss? Well, I, you know, we worked in the food pantry yesterday. That's my first time in God's province for three months. But you find it easy to witness to people who are hungry. Yeah. And who are in need. Yeah. And it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Thank God. God yeah. is the one that's provided. And the, 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 the biggest opportunity is to follow up. See, we're all thankful. But now we've got to get you in school, okay? Because even the public school gets this. Kids cannot decide they're not going to go to school anymore, can they? They can't do it. Got to get, you got to get them in school. Yeah because now you've got to get under some kind of teaching. You want to understand why you're in this situation. Uh, and I think that's the part that people don't want. They don't want to go that step farther. Yes, they're appreciative. Uh, we're always appreciative when someone comes in and helps us and, and, and does for us. But you've got to go farther. You know, there has to be some Look at the disciples. They walk with Jesus for three years. And at the end of that three years, they still didn't quite get it. But still, they carried on. And now we're reading about uh, the things they wrote. But it, can't, it cannot stop there. It can't. It has, we've got to, somebody, that's why we need more soldiers on the battlefield. Because somebody's got to disciple them. It's one thing to baptize you and say, all right, you're now saved. I'll see you later. I'll see you in heaven. But it's another thing to walk with someone because now that's when the enemy comes in and wants to attack. Every nation that has um, gone, if we look at history, and we'll talk about this more on Tuesday, if we look at history, every pagan nation that starts to worship other gods, the first thing that pagan nation does it goes after the children, the first thing, every time. And uh, that was what got Israel out of Jerusalem. They started to sacrifice children. And look at what we're doing. The message 
it, needs, it has to go out there. We get it. We understand it. But there's people out there, they've got to hear it. They've got to hear it. And we've got to come up with a strategy. We have to. And I think we have not, don't do it alone, because we're never alone. Uh, because Jesus sent them out two by two. But when you start to look at this world, they need it. They need it. But we need it also. You know, just to, to piggyback off what Bob said, you know, we're in, we're in line, and we, uh, this lady and her husband came through, and boy, she was just tears. And I said, everything okay? She says, you just don't know how much this means. And yeah. how much this is and and I said well look I said you know it, it's all God that's right and I said I said it, it, it's amazing and that, that just kind of you know you kind of yeah. you know it's those moments that you yeah. think about and everything here she is she was joy and crying because you know she was receiving some food and I thought about my past week you know and and I found you know I, I kind of you know you, you kind of mentioned a little bit about it when you first started about that you know, when times are bad, boy, we hit our knees and God, you know, show up, God, show up, God. But when things are what we consider <laughs> smooth, mm -hmm. you know, where are we? Are we still on our knees or, yeah. you know, and, and all that? And I just, you know, I, it made me realize that, you know, sometimes that, you know, even when there's, there's going to be peaks and valleys and all that, and, you know, you always be saying God on the mountain top right. as he is in the valley, right? Yeah. And everything, and you know, I just, you know, I just think that, you know, sometimes he sends us those signs mm -hmm. and say, "Hey, you know, yeah. keep going," and, and everything. And I think uh, next time someone says that, "Hey, what's your story?" Uh huh. Can we get together? Can I come to your house? What about Bob? See how far they they really want to go, because it goes farther than that. It goes farther. Uh, and so that's a, they're opening that door. They're saying, you know, I'm just so thankful. Okay, uh, what can we do? What's your situation? Because what you might find out sometimes is that we're creating our own problem, mm -hmm. you know. And it's not, it's not a judging thing. We want to help people out of that, you know. Uh, and to eventually where, you know what, I no longer need a food pantry, you know. Because now I'm in a family of believers. They're not going to ever let me go hungry. Not ever. And at the same time, we can pray to God. We can fellowship with him. I can strengthen my faith. It's more. It goes beyond. Sometimes we, we stop. Right when God says, I'm opening the door so you can go in. Because a lot of those people really need Jesus Christ. Well, we all do. And when they say they're thankful... Just find out just how thankful. Can we set up a Bible study? Can we come to see you? You know, oh no. I'm gonna close with this story. <laughs> we had a, you know, I went, came from a small church and uh, we would always get a lot of benevolent calls. Some of them would be pretty, you know, <laughs> they'd be pretty bizarre, you know. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I'm sure they do, you know. I'm not involved in it. Like, we're in a small church, there's not a lot of people. And we had this one lady, we just, we, she basically eventually just kind of included us into her budget, you know. Every month, her light bill needed to be paid, you know. And, you know, we invited her to church. Uh, now, nah, I'll meet you on the parking lot after church, I my money, you know. <laughs> So the thing is, how can we help her? You know, this is the thing that we're saying, because this is not helping her. So uh, she doesn't want to come to church. She just wants nothing to do with uh, interacting with the believers. So, and, but we want to help her. So we get with social services, you know, because we want this lady to be able to get by every month without having to count on us. Well, yeah, they know her, you know, and um, so, um, but she didn't want to, uh, apparently she's abusing the services. 
And so um, she just gets in my head and just walks away. But then guess what, a few months later. Oh, yeah. See, it's just kind of rotating. And uh, we just had that happen so often. There would be a family. See, you got to do right. <laughs> there was a family in our church. There was a lady, and she had two kids, and she got assistance. And we helped her. But it's her and her two kids. So then her mother moves in. So that requires more food. Well, so is her mother, her, and her two kids. So now she's got a boyfriend. Okay, you don't go to church, but... So now it's her mother, her, and a boyfriend, her two kids. And so the mother, she has a boyfriend, too. So now it's the mother, the mother's boyfriend, her, her boyfriend, her two kids. Now the boyfriend, he's got kids, too, that come to visit, <laughs> right? So now we got the mother, the daughter... The two boyfriends, the two kids, and the kids that visit. And so it's, it's requiring more resources. Now they're already getting re- You got to do what's right. See, and that's, you got to convince people you got to do what's right and then trust God. I could just go on and on with stories of people who uh, go to church every Sunday, refuse to get married because they don't get their check cut off. See, they're both getting checks. You know, you know, you know Jerry, Jerry Murillo always says, our job is to take care of the needy and God will take care of the greedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we want them to understand what we represent. You know, That's right. Amen. We want them to understand what we represent. And if I can get into your life, I'm going to get into it. But we don't want that, do we? Not even a lot of Christians. I don't want you in my life because you're going to see how messed up I am. <laughs> Well, here's another thing that we fail to realize. Maybe, just maybe, there's people that are members in this church that can't make it from month to month. Oh, they're sure are. But you know what? They're not hurting. And why aren't they hurting? Why would they not be hurting if they're having trouble making it from month to month? Because God always provides. They trust him. See, you, there, there's no way around it. He's not promising that we're going to have everything. He's going to take care of our needs. And I think sometimes we overlook that, is that everybody doesn't have the same resources. But I got a God. To take care of them, and we want to feed them with also what? what? Teach them. And I can't remember his great music, but he talks about that each one of us, our lives is written in heaven. That's right. Just like our cranky and everything. People are watching and reading our book. That's right. That's right. Lives, but they're reading that. Book. Yeah. And it's going to be revealed to us. I got, got this picture of us sitting in heaven and Say, okay, John, have a seat. I'm going to play your life right up there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and you see what you did here? Well, we're going to burn that up because we know that was all about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just thankful that I'm there. Uh, yeah, I, the gospel, 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 the gospel. 
It's the answer. It's the answer. Yes, we want to feed people. We want to help people. But we want people to understand why they're in that situation. It's that it's the world we live in. It's nothing. It's not your fault. It's not about blame. But there's a solution. There's an answer. And it's Jesus Christ. I need to stop. Let's pray. Father, we're just so thankful how you have continued to reveal yourself. Oh, God, you are so good. Even when we don't have all the things we want, through our aches and pains, our suffering, our hurt, the problems, Lord, you're still good because of what you did for us. Father, you have a message that the world needs to hear. Would you give us the courage and the boldness to not be afraid of rejection because your son was rejected to take it to the world. You've already told us we're going to have trouble, but we're resting on your promises, and we're just so thankful for eternal salvation. You stand up praying your blessed son, Jesus' name. Amen. Faith Walk 101. Start